Welcome to this 10-minute lightning talk, ML-based graph embeddings, presented by Frederick Russo. You can start now, Frederick. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Elaine. Um, so uh, yes, welcome to my talk. Uh, the title is uh, Graph Mayonnaise. And um, so I'm, uh, my name is Freddie Russo. I'm a software engineer at Braintree, which is an artificial intelligence uh, startup um, which is based in London. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about our flagship um, graph analytics platform, which is called uh, Gamma, um, which is currently being developed as a Neo4j graph app. Um, so I'm going to show you how we use Gamma to tackle a, a real world problem uh, for Unilever. Um, you've probably heard of Unilever. It's an enormous consumer goods company. Um, they own over 400 brands, including several well-known mayonnaise products. So uh, mayonnaise is uh, quite big business. Um, it's currently 10 times the size of the global esports industry. And um, by 2023, it's estimated to be worth about uh, $12.5 billion worldwide. Um, and uh, it's sold all over the world. And consumers in each country um, tend to like different types of mayonnaise. So for example, in the United States, they uh, prefer sweeter mayonnaise, while in Germany, they like something a bit more sour. Um, in Japan, they are a big fan of uh, white mayonnaise that's pure white in color, um, while in France, they like things that are a bit more uh, yolky yellow. Um, and so as is common in food science, um, every product has what's called a sensory profile. Um, so this is essentially a series of measurements um, based on things like taste, um, its appearance, or its physical properties. Um, and what the sensory profiles allow you to do is that they allow you to turn each product into a vector. So by scoring each mayonnaise product on these different attributes, you can generate a vector representation. And then once you have your vector representation, um, a common technique is to then um, try to figure out how much people like particular attribute combinations. And so what you do is that you um, first, conduct consumer surveys. Um, and basically, you ask groups of consumers to try each product, and then they give it a score out of 10, and then you have a, a list of numbers. Um, but one of the issues is that consumer surveys are very expensive, and you can't keep going back and forth when you're designing a new product. Um, so you use something called a regression model to predict what consumers will think, rather than um, actually asking them what they think. Um, and so the basic idea is that you can stack all of your um, sensory attributes into a matrix on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, you can have a vector of your known um, consumer liking scores, and you can develop a regression model on this basis. And so once you have your regression model, then whenever you have a new product, you can put it into the model, and then out comes the predicted consumer liking score, as you can see in the bottom here. Um, so as I said, consumer surveys are very expensive. And if you're selling your mayonnaise all around the world, like Unilever do, um, you can't realistically carry out these surveys in every country. Um, so the situation is that Unilever have surveys, but only for um, maybe a dozen countries. So um, how can we start to connect our models? And how can we leverage the information that we already have to make predictions in new countries? Um, so say we have a mayonnaise product which has three regression models um, in the United States, Australia, and Japan. And for this new product, you predict uh, these three liking scores that you can see on the screen here. And now we have a fourth country, which is Mexico, but we don't have any regression models for Mexico. So how can we use the three models that we do have to make a prediction for Mexico? Um, so one thing you could do is you could take a simple average, um, or you could uh, choose a country which is closest, so say the United States, and say that's the most representative of the Mexican market. Um, but an even better option is to um, take a version of an average which is weighted by um, a similarity measure. Um, so basically, you add up all of the different um, predicted scores, and you weight each of them by a similarity measure between Mexico and that particular country. So for example, the United States predicts 8.2. So you'd weight that by 
some sort of similarity weight between the USA and Mexico, and then you add on to that the one for Australia and so on, as you can see at the bottom. Uh, but then this leads on to another problem, which is how does one determine these weights? Um, so how do you quantify how similar two cuisines are? Um, and a good solution to this problem is uh, obtained if you use a graph. So what we want to do is that we want to construct a graph that captures the relationships between cuisines. Um, and so in order to do this, we crawled a number of popular um, recipe websites. So there's one called Yumly, which is based in California. And uh, there's also the BBC Food website um, based here in the UK. And using the recipes from these websites, um, we constructed a graph with four types of node. So first of all, we have cuisine nodes. So these are the countries themselves. Uh, then we had 18,000 recipes and we had 800 unique ingredients that are shared amongst all those recipes. And then uh, we also had uh, flavors as represented by flavor compounds, so uh, chemicals. And there were 1,100 of those. And the graph that we construct um, is undirected. So to give you an example, if we have a node for England, uh, English cuisine has uh, quite a famous uh, dish called fish and chips. And fish and chips contains four ingredients, uh, oil, uh, some kind of fish, vinegar, and potato. But English cuisine also has another dish, which is called pie and mash. And pie and mash also has four basic ingredients. Um, and you'll see that pie and mash also contains potato. So the fish and chips ingredients node is connected to the pie and mash ingredient, uh, recipe node by the potato ingredient. Um, and then this graph can be further enriched by adding on the flavor compounds. So each of these ingredients would have a flavor, which is a node that it's attached to. So if we start to add in more and more recipes, then we can start to discern connections between cuisines. So, um, so again, if we start with uh, a, a cuisine node, so say this is England, and we plot, uh, we add all of their recipes, and then we add all of the ingredients and connect them to those recipes, um, then we can now connect this to another country by looking at the recipes from that country and connecting them to those ingredients as well. So you have a situation like this, where now uh, two cuisines are connected by a large number of paths that pass through their common ingredients um, and also their flavors. I haven't added flavors just to make it simpler to visualize. Um, so after we did this, we had a graph um, that was uh, reasonably large, um, it has uh, 20,000 nodes and about 200,000 edges. And there were an enormous number of potential paths between cuisines, about 330 billion. So now we have our graph and we can see how countries are connected together. Um, we still need to extract a similarity score from this in some way. And so we do this using a graph embedding. So a graph embedding is essentially an algorithm that maps the nodes of a graph into a vector space. Um, and this mapping is very uh, special because the distance between the embedded nodes in the vector space reflects uh, the structural similarity of their neighborhoods in the graph itself. Um, so there are a number of machine learning algorithms uh, for doing this, and we have them implemented on our Gamma platform. Um, so here are three quite uh, well-known ones. Um, and the one I'm going to talk about is uh, DeepWalk, which is based on uh, an actual language processing algorithm called Skipgram. And so what we're going to do, just to recap, is that we're going to take our cuisines graph and we're going to apply a graph embedding and embed the nodes in a vector space like this. And then we're going to measure the Euclidean distance between the, uh, each pair of nodes. And then that Euclidean distance is going to be used to generate our um, similarity scores between the countries. So, uh, so now what we need to do is that we need to run uh, a graph embedding algorithm on uh, our Neo4j database. So we do this using uh, Braintree's um, Neo4j uh, graph app called Gamma, um, which is a graph analytics platform which allows you to import, analyze, and export um, graph structured data um, within a Neo4j database. 
and you can run the latest machine learning algorithms really easily. And you can also implement your own algorithms in Python and then run them through Gamma on your database. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of how you do this. So first of all, you go onto the Gamma homepage, which is this. And uh, you can see that we have a launch bar at the top. And you can enter Cypher queries into this launch bar. So say if we just have a quick look at uh, the top 30 nodes in the graph. Um, so you can see here a list of uh, the nodes. And these are all the cuisine nodes. So their label is a cuisine. And uh, you can see we've got American, Brazilian, all the different countries that we crawled off the web. So what we want to do now is we want to run our graph embedding algorithm. So we're going to go onto the Explore Modules tab. And we have a list of uh, some of the available algorithms. And then we're going to go to Deep Walk, which is the one we want. And we're going to uh, write the embeddings onto the nodes themselves as properties. So we click Write Embeddings. Um, and then on this screen here, we can set some parameters. Um, but they often have defaults, like it does here. And then we would click Confirm. The algorithm would run. And when it's complete, um, we can then run another query to look at the nodes again. And as you can see, the nodes now have a um, embedding property, which is a two-dimensional vector. So now uh, what we can do is that if we uh, measure the distance between these embeddings, we can create a heat map like this, um, which shows the similarities between the different national cuisines. So the darker blue squares mean they're more similar, and the lighter uh, yellow slash greeny colored ones are less similar. So for example, um, as you can see in the top left here, the, the weight between China and Japan is quite high, as is China and Thailand. But the weight between England and China, um, which have very dissimilar cuisines, is much lower. And then on the, on the bottom left-hand corner there, um, I'm just showing some of the uh, Mediterranean countries just to show how they all have uh, reasonably high uh, similarity scores. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, and if you're interested in hearing more about Gamma or you'd like to be involved in um, some of our alpha testing, uh, then please do get in touch with us uh, via the email address here, um, gamma at braintree.com. Uh, thank you. And uh, I believe uh, we have a Hunger Games session with some questions, which um, if you go to the link below, you can um, answer these questions and, and win a prize, I think. I've pasted the link for the Hunger, Hunger Games form in the oh, chat thank you. area. Um, so we'll leave this slide up for a few minutes so people can answer the questions if they're participating in the Hunger Games. Um, have a few things in the chat. Um, let's see, what do we have? Somebody wanted to know if, if you could paste the link to the Gamma web page. Uh, yes, that. I can do. Okay, if you could if you could paste that in the chat area, that would be appreciated. Um, Ricky Costa is is asking if this is open sourced. Um, uh, no, it's not open sourced. It's a, um, a private product that Braintree is developing, um, mm -hmm. but it's based on. Uh, so a lot of the algorithms that we're implementing um, are from uh, academic research papers and things like that. Um, we're trying to uh, do our best to have all of the very latest algorithms that are being published each year on the platform. OK. Um, here's, here's the link. I'll paste it in the chat. OK, thank you. A couple more minutes for the Hunger Games. If anybody has any other questions for Frederick, they can post them here. OK, that completes this session. Thank you very much, Frederick, for your presentation today. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, everyone. OK, bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.